Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and OML Digitizing. And today we're working in Hatch and we're talking about the new updates that they just did. We actually have a new tool. It's really cool. Um, but first I'm going to show you guys how to, um, we're just going to go over all the things they update. There's quite a few. So I'm going to go to help release notes and that's going to open everything up for me and we want to click up here to release notes and it is update number two so hatch v 1.0 g update two and that's what we're going to go on now let's go through it was updated earlier on and let's look quality improvements which is always a huge benefit so stitch shortening is automatically applied to sharp corners to decrease density on the inside edge which is absolutely fantastic this is what we used to be getting and if you look right here right where i'm circling then you can see how dense that is and now see it's going to shorten it and make the corners much much better i think that's absolutely fantastic Thank you, Hatch. I'll try not to say that 500 times, but thank you, Hatch. So the next one is automatic corners for applique. Automatic corners have been updated to work with applique. Fantastic, fantastic. So now we have the option of turning it on or off in both applique and normal embroidery. Awesome. Branching multiple colors. All branch objects change to the one color. Now the design palette now updates to show the same. Cool. They've added a new thread chart, Hemingworth thread chart. That's fantastic if that's the thread that you use. Changing colors for selected objects. There's been a few reported issues to do with changing colors on selected, selected objects. When selecting all the objects and applying a single color, not all colors were changed. I had noticed that once or twice, not very often. Um, some could not be changed after manual dis digitizing. So they fixed all that. That's great. It wasn't a big deal, but awesome. Um, the other thing is they have some font packs up for sale. So they have, I think they have three on the website now, and they're going to be adding these. Um, font pack number four, Decor, which includes Arial Rounded, which I bet you is really nice. Empress, Border Block, I'm not sure what they are, but we'll have to check them out once they're up. Um, special occasions, Helvetica, um, small, and it gives you the sizes, by the way, City Script and Dauphin. Awesome. So the knife tool, this is what we're really going to be talking about today. Um, this is a perfect example. This is why I wanted to get on here, but I'm going to show you guys afterwards how this actually works. So the layout editor has a new knife tool awesome this is a great tool to have um it's used to manually cut shapes into smaller fragments so what you can do with something like this and you can see um right here that it kind of forms this kind of knot right here uh and you can't really fix it so what it does is you you use the knife from here to here and it creates this and this looks much better rather than re-digitizing this part stop digitize this part you can just use the knife tool and we're going to play around with it after it's really good for fixing up true type fonts and i think that's fantastic we're not, not going to use it on fonts today but we uh we are going to use it for a few other things so let's go on we will look oh remember this note the the knife tool is enabled when you purchase layout editor um you have to have layout editor to get this new tool um, if you have monogrammer, the knife tool also appear in the lettering monogramming. So awesome. So break apart. Break apart is one of my favorite things. I love to break apart everything. When the lettering is broken apart into individual objects, and I think that's probably three times that you break apart. You do the line, you do the words, you do the letters. You can change the stitch type now, which is kind of cool. Uh, resequence docker with changing zoom factors. So when you zoom in, you can still use a resequence doctor, docker. Um, they've added hoops. Awesome. Ricoma hoops. Awesome. Offset center lines and custom hoops so you can move stuff around. Awesome. Hoop number one and three center lines. Hoop center lines are redrawn correctly when rotating hoop number one and three. That's helpful if you use that. 
Okay, this one I love. Default hoop position. So what it was before was it defaulted to automatic centering. So every time I went to use the hoop, it centered, and that's not what I want to do a lot of the time. I think it's super handy, but it's just not what I want to do. So it's going to change that, and you can read about that. Uh, Brother PS file format support, that's absolutely awesome. It's just updated everything. Trim codes are now correctly recognized on Brother PR600 machines, which is one of the ones we have. Awesome. More Brother hoops have been added. Thank you. That's cool. Transferring designs, they've improved that. Husqvarna VP3 files in FAF machines. There's been a few problems and they've fixed that. Loading designs on Janome MC 1500. There were a few errors with that and they fixed that too. Yay, Hatch. Login errors. If you were getting that error, they've now fixed it. And uh, this is awesome too, releasing your license for reuse. You're only allowed, I believe it's three logins. I'm not really sure. I'll have to check with uh, Hatch on that one. But now they've changed it. So when you log into Hatch, you use one of your licenses. If you're logged in with Remember Me ticked, you can release the license back to the cloud by selecting File, Sign Out and Exit Program. It, you have to be on the internet to do this. That way, that license is available to use on another machine. So, excellent. Thank you very much for these updates. Now let's go to the good stuff. Let's talk about the knife. Now we talked about it for lettering, and that's very handy for lettering, but let's see what other things we can do with it. I love the knife thing, so let's play around with it. I am just going to pull out just a square. We did a lot of circles. I'm just going to pull out a square hit enter and if you guys updated and you hear that let's turn it off so i went to software settings and right there enable mouse click sound there we go take that one off so let's put it in true view so we can see what we're doing let's bring up our resequence because i like working that way so you have a square and i don't want another square so backspace i forgot to do the select key there's a shortcut for that but i never use it so what can we do with this knife tool? It is super awesome. You have to go into edit objects and it's right here and it's a knife and it does exactly what you think it will do. So let's click on the knife. Notice your icon, your mouse icon changes and we're going to click and click and press enter and see what it did. It cut it into two pieces boop just like that how cool is that let's undo that um and you can cut it more than once so let's go here now that would be beneficial if you need to chop up pieces or divide things or do different things so what can you do with this let's have a look here double click on that to bring up my stitch type you can have one in embossed and it was one big square we can do this one look at how crooked i was awesome change it to motif without moving anything around now you can use this how about we make this one ripple why not you can use this on any object that you create so i think it's absolutely fantastic it's super handy i actually use this tool a lot in other programs so i am super thankful that um, Hatch has come out with it. I think you guys will find a lot of uses for it. Click, click, duh, and it doesn't look like it did anything, but if you look over to your resequence, it did, and whoops, there we go, pull it apart. So if you want to make a design, say for example, well, let me show you exactly what you can make. Let's do this again. Let's do that again. That's okay. Let's go to digitize. Let's do a circle again. So pull out my circle, which I absolutely love, hit enter, and let's focus in on here. I don't have auto scroll on because it drives me nuts, but it would be beneficial sometimes. Then you can go up to edit objects, and then we're going to take our knife tool, and we're going to use our grid as a guideline right here and right here, and press enter. And if you wanted say this was a basketball or something like that they're called name drops if you wanted to make a name drop that is how easy it is to do instead of 
digitizing, duplicating, flipping, whatever. Just do your circle, cut it, and then you can put, um, for example, a name in here. And I'm going to do it because I wanted to show you. Also in lettering and monogramming, there is your knife. They've made it super handy so you can fix up your lettering if need be. So there we go. We'll do what? OML loves hatch, which is awesome. And that's how you would do a name drop. Super easy, fantastic. Um, so the knife tool is good for everyday use for just about everything, um, especially the true type fonts, which everyone knows you have to be careful for it's also for slicing up things. Look at all the slicing and dicing we did right there. Super fantastic. You can make out of one shape, you can make multiple shapes. And for something as simple as a name drop like this, um, you know, you don't have to do just a circle, but we can fix it up and make cute things. I was thinking like Easter egg. That's um, just do an oval shape. We can just pull it out to be a little bit of an oval. And see how quick and easy that is? And you decorate this part, decorate that part, you can outline it. So the knife, this is how we use the new tool, the new knife tool here inside Hatch Embroidery. Awesome, I hope you guys have fun playing with this. Um, hopefully I'm gonna incorporate it into our classes and come up with something really cool, probably something like this, because this is absolutely awesome. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you guys in the next video.